my therapist told me, John, you've been coming here for two months and I haven't seen any change in your behavior. And I was like, oh, well, I guess you're fired. I'm friends with a chick who's a social medium. She can talk to deleted Twitter accounts. I look like Jesus came back, but he forgot why. I look like Aquaman grew up in a swamp. That's pretty good, all right, I gotta laugh. We're doing stand-up, it's funny at moments. You just came at the wrong six seconds. I said, there we go. Got him on the back end. I'm on TikTok. You'd be surprised how much people actually enjoy this. This hurts me more than it hurts you. I know, I hope it's not Corona. I mean, I already had that, so I don't think it is. It doesn't oh. feel like it. John Jacobs rolling with the Rona. I know. It, uh, yeah, and the, and the fucked up thing. Am I allowed to curse on here? Of course. Yeah. All right. The most messed up part is uh, I, I can't really lay down. When I lay down, all the pressure goes to my head. So I can, I can only really fall asleep sitting up. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been like passing out sitting on the couch. It's like, a, like if you were a pirate, a drunk pirate. Yeah, it is like that. You can only sleep s sitting up. Uh -huh. I, I've been I've been doing that. I'm not even sick, man. I've been l l laying in my recliner recently because sometimes I get these like anxi anxiety shit going on. Yeah. And like I feel like laying down, I just feel like I need to be up immediately and like out of the house and like walk around before I lose my mind. So I've been literally just sleeping. My bed's perfectly fine. Just got to sleep yeah. in the recliner for a while because I'm a little bit fucked up in the head. Very nervous. I hear you, man. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that great? Do you ever hear the origin of the phrase hangover? What is it? Oh, I forgot. So uh, sailors and stuff, the, the lowest form of accommodation like a hotel was for a couple cents, you could just pass out across a rope. So, <laughs> so there'd be a whole bunch of sailors just hanging over a rope. And that's where the phrase hangover came How from. did that wow. business die? <laughs> How did that <laughs> business die? I know. That, those are some tough guys, I guess. Yeah. To be like, fuck it, dude. I'm passing out on a rope tonight. It's like, uh, you're going home? Nope. No. I'm going no. over that rope there. This is the, this <laughs> is the best rope, rope I've ever hung on or hung over. Yeah. So I guess we yeah, should, we should uh, introduce our guest. <laughs> sure, sure. Make it official. Well, at, well, as you may have uh, seen uh, before the interview kicked in, uh, the little clip of uh, John Jacobs and on his TikTok. <laughs> so yeah, man. I'm a TikTok kid. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> man, so, so, you know, we have to talk to you about your uh, vast career. Sure. What's for been sure. going on? You're very uh, uh, and actually, I, I saved a story. I saved one of the news stories. I told you I was going to save a story for you because yeah. I wanted to get your official comment because you're such for a sure. fan. Oh hell so, yeah! But before we get to the story, let's run down the career of John Jacobs. Yeah. Well, now, I think you, you started. I'm... You started. I, I got to get this stuff in before you die. Yeah, yeah, you you were at the first improv, Mike. You were there. <laughs> well, well, when you came when you came to Tampa, but you started yeah. in uh, D.C., right? Yeah, started in D.C. So now, now uh, compare the scenes. Like when you started, what was the scene like there, compared to how what you've gone through in the past few years? Um, I'd say the Tampa scene is much more wild than the D.C. scene. Yeah, I'd say the DC scene, you know, everybody's kind of got a, an air of, you know, importance. Everybody thinks they're smart. Everybody, you know, <laughs> everybody's yeah. a little elite up there. So the rooms are, can sometimes be a little pompous, but Did yeah. And, have, and uh, just, like when you were up there, when you were doing uh, uh, work up there, when you, when you were going on stage, did you ever run into like um, politicians, kids trying to do comedy and things like that? No, we did have a congressman's daughter in my high school, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Did she think she was funny? <laughs> Pretty cool. No. Oh. <laughs> and I get a shame, though. I actually had a, a video. I had a video of the congressman's daughter, underage drunk, throwing up on a subway. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I know. And then I lost that phone. And that would have oh. been worth a million dollars. I was, was... I was going to say, there's no time for comedy. Chicks like that are probably, they're like blowing everybody know, in the man. school bathrooms, those dirty, dirty whores. You had leverage. You had scandal you material. Know, I had it all. <laughs> no, not anymore. Now it's someone's got it. Some dope dealer in D.C. has it. Yeah, somebody else has no idea who <laughs> it is, but they just have a video on a phone of a girl wasted well, on a subway train. 
What's what's her name? Tell us her name. Just kidding. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm not saying I'm, that. I know. I'm not I know. Her up on Facebook. They're gonna yeah. come to my house. She's yeah, still no, she's still blowing people in high schools, and she's 33. <laughs> Probably. God, man. So uh, about uh, the the TV shows, I remember when you submitted for those yeah. shows, like you submitted uh, for Are You the One? It's like yeah. it was a, it was a brand new show. So nobody even heard of it. So everybody was kind of like, ah, oh, is this going to be another kind of, you know, wild, wacky show? Yeah, and it was. Yeah. But, <laughs> it was. <laughs> but what was we that experience like, was. man? Was that like your first big uh, TV experience? Yeah, that was my first big TV experience. I'd say it was like being on spring break for like two months straight, you know, just wasted. Yeah, they, they just, they had a notebook in the house and they said, write down anything you want in the notebook and we'll get it here. So that was pretty cool. Wow. Write down Bud Light Lime, you know, tequila. We wrote down a, we wrote down a basketball hoop. They got a full-size basketball hoop. Oh, there. my God. Wow. Yeah, we're like, anybody, we're stuck on. Anybody yeah, write like, down we're, anything they wouldn't, they wouldn't get? <laughs> um, I don't know. So, so one girl was, was into, like, some fancy kombucha. And, oh. we, like, we were, on, we were on an island in Hawaii. So I don't know where the hell they got this kombucha from, but they'd get her like one a week. Oh my God. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's it's not pretty too cool. shabby. Thumbs yeah. up cool. on MTV, man. Yeah. <laughs> and what take us back? What um what what year was this are we, are we looking at when you were doing this? This was 2014 okay. that I did Are You the One. Wow. And then, you know, the the real exciting part was just last year they put it on Netflix. Yeah, that was, yeah, so that was, was did you get me. like a huge response from that alone from the re from the yeah it was it was a bigger response than the uh, initial release because you know when it came out the first time it was on MTV and you know you got to tune into the time you got to like, schedule a time to sit down and you watch couldn't it. binge it wet you couldn't yeah binge it, yeah you know? it's like now you <laughs> can binge like, watch yeah plus like MTV everybody you know naturally thinks it's a novelty anyway yeah so, but, but to get on Netflix now, it's like, oh, wow, you know, this is a serious thing. Yeah, that, and then, yeah, yeah you did uh, the challenge after that. Yeah, I did the challenge after that. That would have been 2015. And that experience was completely different. No, you know, no notebooks with stuff. Because uh, yeah. the, the season I, sorry, the season I was on was uh, season 26. So it was like, you know, they had been around the block by the time I got on it. So, you know, it was way stricter. They had learned from all their mistakes. Now, real quick, John, take us back, like walk people through that for the challenge. What, what did that entail? Yeah, the challenge is kind of more like Survivor, but with MTV folks. So yeah, it was more intense challenges. The first day our challenge was we had to like be suspended between the two tallest buildings in Panama. Oh my and that was pretty wild. Okay. So, so that That's was exciting. Insane. How many waivers did you have to sign for that? Oh, show? all of it. Yeah, they say like if you die, that's on you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't get to be a part of the reunion show. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna have an in memoriam. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. The, the those who we lost this past season yeah, in season yeah. twenty six. And they show the clip of you falling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. And ah! it's falling down in slow it becomes motion. Becomes a meme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a meme. Bye, Felicia. Oh. oh. Yeah, seriously. That's <laughs> awesome. So uh, now you've been doing, uh, you kind of actually been doing exactly what you said you were going to do. Like the, the first time I met you, you know, like uh, we started talking about comedy, you said that you wanted to make videos. Yeah. Put them on and put them online for people to watch and, and have fun with. And yeah. that's exactly what you've been doing. <laughs> Yeah. So like how many like you've like you've made uh several specials and short films already uh which one is has been your favorite experience yeah so dude uh, um, oh man uh the the jesus stand-up special was a really exciting project <laughs> yeah because that one was a little bit scary at times to like perform as jesus in like a crowded comedy club because it's like you know, people could get offended by that. Some people not might not understand the humor. I think the last time I saw somebody do something like that was um, David Cross. Oh yeah. So, have you seen? Oh yeah, Cross he did that. Like this is like, like yeah, way back, probably like early '90s, maybe. 
but yeah this is like oh wow he did, no yeah, he I did didn't a very it. it's completely different than what you're doing but it was a variation of jesus yeah. you know uh <laughs> on stage so wow but that's like you know i haven't seen anybody else really tackle that you know like that i actually have a, a continuation of the jesus uh, idea that i'm working on right now i'm actually i've commissioned somebody to build a life-size crucifix <laughs> and i'm gonna do stand up hung up on the cross and it's gonna be called dying on the cross <laughs> interns will do every anything for you even build a crucifix i think you should just find a really huge person and have them yeah. be the cross yeah, yeah. good yeah, giant yeah. that just human, holds you up a human <laughs> cross just holding you <laughs> yeah for but and before another, we before we get to this incredible idea you just had right there before the lightning strikes us here in the studio uh -huh. what what gave you the this inspiration or idea to do this well uh i i believe in jesus and uh you know i've I, i've never seen a a portrayal that i don't know i really liked and i wanted to do one that you know kind of felt like what it would be like if you just got thrown back here and was told to do stand up because mm -hmm. the jokes are positive jokes like i'm not bashing religion i'm not trying to you know say mean things about jesus it's all like historically accurate jokes and you know light-hearted fun fun zingers so I, you know. I, I caught you doing some uh months ago when i watched you at um uh at snappers comedy club in palm harbor i believe uh -huh. you're doing a little bit of that on say so you were doing your own set but then you did some religious jokes but they weren't yeah they weren't blasphemous at all I yeah think, i think the reaction is uh uh when people react in, in a negative way it's more like the cynicism of the world as opposed to it's because this is how they're reading it right That's yeah how they're taking it so it, everything's a trigger word now mm -hmm. yeah some people just hear a concept and they don't even give it a chance they just write it off immediately yeah exactly did you but, see uh bobby katie got in trouble uh, uh oh yeah he he did uh like holocaust jokes at snappers uh -huh. and a woman wrote a long a long post about it and tagged him and like everybody's jumping in like yeah that's messed up you should have just walked out and bobby responded and was like you know you're butchering my jokes you didn't even get it right but, <laughs> wow. yeah, man, and i i think i think snappers is on the side of bobby so that's good yeah but but yeah man i, I haven't seen a you know a long scathing review of a comedy club in a while well right now it's the, it's that pivotal moment where um comics I should say comedians, because comics to me are just people that want to make people laugh. Yeah. Comedians are people that want to make people laugh at what they think is funny. Sure, sure. So I think this is the moment where uh, comedians, well, it was propelled with Chappelle. Uh, you know, comedians have to stand up and say, look, this is, this is freedom of speech. It's yeah. like, just because you disagree with the idea doesn't mean you get to dismiss my life you know you yeah. don't get to destroy me because of that because if i yeah. did if i disagreed with everything you said you'd never get to leave the house yeah exactly yeah. i think that's where it's we're at but uh i mean that being said i'm i'm curious as to who a couple of your influences are because to me like watching what you've been doing i don't know if you're aware of it or maybe you are intentionally but uh it's kind of reflective like when you go out and do the uh the stuff in the street like you know you're out there really you know you're not trying to <laughs> shock people you're just just being out in the street doing it yeah it's very yeah. reminiscent of like andy coffin to me thanks i mean is yeah. that like an influence in what you've been doing well uh oh man so i just did one two days ago i don't know if you saw the pictures i posted yeah. but I, I did stand up as at the Marvel character Loki from the back of a moving pickup truck. And that shit was, you know, a rush. And I think at this point, I like pushing the boundaries of stuff that hasn't been done yet. You know, I did stand up in the ocean, you know, I'm halfway in the ocean doing jokes. So it's like, you know, it feels good. Plus, once I started doing the outside stuff, I realized that a lot of people just, you know, just don't have the nerve to try that. Yeah. you know mm -hmm. it's like it's like you can bash it or like you know think it's a novelty but it's like you know there's there's no more honest 
you know, review of comedy than just some guy walking by you on the street. Yeah. So it's like you, you really got to try yeah. that much harder to, you know. Yeah, it's like focus. you actually you actually affect people as they're just walking by. You know? so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's yeah, it's like a punk comedy act. Yeah, it's a different fun. setting. It's not a comedy club. You have people there, but they're they're going about their own lives and wondering yeah. what you're doing. And then, either way, you're getting feedback instantaneously. So, uh, any yeah. any brushes any brushes with with the authorities yet, or you you kind of like kind of wouldn't mind that, or what do you think? The only brush with anyone I had was a street preacher when I was Jesus. Okay, and that was really exciting. They they got really mad at me. Tell me you, you know, got this- that on video. Yeah, yeah, I got that on video. That's in the special. And, uh, it, you know, he's preaching through a, mega, a megaphone. And I walk up to him and I say, uh, I heard you were talking about my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and then immediately, you know, it just goes off the rails. Oh, he's boy. That me. is hilarious. That's comedy. <laughs> it is. That's comedy, comedy right there, man. <laughs> and I got him to listen to me oh at a certain point because I'm like, you guys are just yelling at people. I'm like, you think that's effective? You're like messing people's days up. So, you know, they understood that a little bit, but, you know, they still didn't have any respect for what I was doing. I think you should you should dress up like a dog and go into a uh, an animal shelter and say, I'm looking for the man who shot my paw. Oh, <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that idea. Like be an animal, do stand yeah. up as an animal. That's pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm. Yeah, I'm a dog on all fours, and somebody has a leash around my neck. They're like walking me around. Yes, like yeah. a hot chick. Well, yeah. Mr. Mr. Jacobs, I think it's time for us to talk about this story that was in the news. And I'm, I'm going to yeah. read a, a little brief description of it. You probably already know everything about it. <laughs> Okay, here, let me put this, this back a, in the freezer real quick. I, oh, go ahead. I, I held this story from the news, uh, from our news uh, stories, because I wanted to share it, because I pulled this as a, as a, in honor of John Jacobs, because he is such a huge fan, a dedicated yeah. fan. And this has to do with, you may have already heard about it, Vin Diesel asked yeah. Wayne Johnson to come back to Fast and Furious franchise. He says, Hobbs can't be played by no other I hope that you rise to the occasion and fulfill your destiny. Nice. So that's, that's an inspirational uh, message. So this was all after um, everything that went down in, what, 2016? There was a fallout because uh, yeah, yeah. they had different ways of working, basically, is what it came down to. And, uh, yeah. you know, it, it, you know it, it showed itself in production. And uh, The Rock decided to step out of the franchise. He's, he made that announcement that he wasn't going to come back. Yeah. But uh, Vin Diesel went on Instagram. Now, this could be read in several different ways. Sure. You know, it's like, you know, did you read the whole thing? I didn't read it at all. Okay, well, I'm going to read some of this for you. Yeah, please. So Vin Diesel took to Instagram on Sunday to ask Dwayne The Rock Johnson to bury their feud and return the Fast and Furious franchise. The two actors fell out back in 2016. He wrote, my little brother, Dwayne, the time has come. The world awaits the finale of Fast 10. As you know, my children refer to you as Uncle Dwayne in my house. There is not a holiday that goes by that they and you don't send well wishes. But that time has come. Legacy awaits. Wow. He continued. He said, I told you years ago that I was going to fulfill my promise to Pablo, referring to Paul. Yeah. Oh, wow. Going Paul, Paul, Pablo. Pablo, I swore that we would we would uh, reach and manifest the best fast in the final that is 10. Nice. I say this out of love, but you must show up. Do not leave the franchise idle. It goes on from there. But wow. uh, but yeah, so uh, what do you think the angle? I mean, there's several ways you could take this. Well, first off, I love that he opened by calling him my little brother. I know. <laughs> and, how are you going to with a jab at him and then ask him to be back in the movie Uh, yeah i don't know how i feel about it because i noticed he was gone from fast nine and you know i I did think it was rude of him to kind of take over production the way he did but after not having him in the movies i I do want him back i think it would be nice to get the rock back in there he made an impact. That's a, I mean, that's why they brought him in yeah. in the first place was to make yeah. that impact. So, I mean, it was a, you know, you got to keep it in perspective. Like this is Vin Diesel's baby. 
you know he brought this thing to life yeah and, and uh he was smart enough and these are like these are basically two alpha males yes you know, they're both flexing and nobody wants to you know but now they're both kind of like coming to the middle but that's yeah. he brought he was smart enough to let them bring in the rock yeah. to make this even a bigger franchise now it's it's huge oh it yeah huge it's, yeah it definitely blew up even more i mean yeah those movies make like a billion dollars every time it's crazy do you think he's going to come back um i hope so i mean i i think he would even if it's just for a small part i think it would be great to see him come back just because i mean yeah he was such a huge character he came in at five so you know if he could come in at 10 that would be that would be a nice bit of movies he did well you know with this i i, I gotta say man i don't know if it was intentional or not but vin diesel putting this out like this it was actually yeah. brilliant because yeah. no matter what everybody's going to want to know what yeah. happens in that final t- is he going to show up are they yeah that's a smart quiet? move if they don't yeah, announce it, it are they keeping it quiet yeah to make it public is a really smart idea yeah you know kind of push him into it let everybody see that he's or even, to get or even if he doesn't respond even better because you don't know yeah like, no nothing's been said production's yeah. underway you right. know we don't yeah. know if yeah. he's gonna show up I'm, I'm i'm picturing something like like at the very end of the movie all of a sudden he's there just that's that's, that's and then post credits that's it sure yeah, yeah. post credits because I, I know i bet you point. i bet you tampa's dave batista another former wrestler oh, yeah. who's got the same look and build and everything i bet you he's going i i think maybe i could be the rock's <laughs> cousin coming and doing this shit because he, he has a successful acting career yeah. same kind of build yeah. same muscles tattoos yeah. to shaved yeah. head i'm just yeah. saying he's probably like hey man i could do this for you oh, yeah sure. it is I'm, pretty cool that there's so many wrestlers in tampa love it yeah. i love that yeah I, lo- I love that for sure yeah really yeah. good good cats too they're all good the female wrestlers the male wrestlers they're all they're just good yeah. people everybody's really good yeah yeah i remember back in the day i mean this has been this has always been a hot spot from mm-hmm. the beginning you yep. know? yeah a lot of wrestlers have always trained here and yep you yeah know, hogan was coming out of here and all that oh yeah stuff, so yeah it's like crazy big time yeah, Becker, man well hey We're- man but before we before we uh, let you go and die on your deathbed <laughs> I know this this is it this is my last public appearance well where where can people see uh, Jesus talks is it out so that's on my YouTube is it on, okay and what's yeah all, all these specials and stuff are on my YouTube oh, I have like up, 700 up. videos on YouTube I'm it's gonna put nice. a link in the description for uh yeah please for John That'd yeah he's cool. got he's got a ton of stuff on there it, I'm I promise you, you're going to be entertained for a while. Oh, yeah, if you well, just, yeah, if you just watch some shit, some stuff, you're going to enjoy it. Well, what's next for you, man? What's coming up? Um, you know, I have these ideas for, you know, the more uh, risky public stand-up things, like the one on the back of the truck. So, yeah, I've got some more, like, stunt comedy ideas that I want to do. Because, yeah, again, it's like nobody else has ever done this. So I want to be the guy who like does something with stand up that other people never tried. Yeah, man. I think you're on your way. So that's awesome. Hell yeah. that's Thanks, cool. man. I, man. I like it. I hope you feel better, brother. Thank you, dude. I'm this is bad. Well, look, yo, look, know. if Jesus yeah. can do it in three days, we expect you to be, be well by the end. You gotta say if you if you croak, you'll just resurrect. It's all good. I feel good about uh-huh. it. So exactly. well, anyway, seriously, get better and everything. We want people to flood your YouTube channel, John Jacobs, and uh all your upcoming shows and stuff are going to be there. We want people to get you out and support you here in the Tampa Bay area and beyond around the world, and around the country. So uh, keep doing what you're Hell doing, yeah, John. Man. Thank you so much. Bye, Pat, Tony. Love Thank you guys. Man. Have a good rest of the day. You, you too. too See you. We'll see you later.